Hi there, Christian Henson from Spitfire Audio here. It's a real honour to be talking to you directly for the first time about this exciting new chapter for Spitfire Audio, our new collaboration with Abbey Road. Now, what often happens is I'll hang around and watch and lurk on various uh, different social media platforms and on various different forums to see the questions that are being asked after we release a new major kind of blue chip line. The reason I do that is then so I can make a film like this to cover maybe some of the questions that are being asked. And the overriding question introducing this new collaboration to the Spitfire canon is that of, well, choice and the confusion that that can bring. Choice is something that Paul and I have always believed in. We really don't like the idea of everyone using the same tools, making the same kind of music. We believe choice is important for us as composers, as is nuance, as is treating these virtual instruments, the samples of real instruments, like real instruments. The fact that these will inform the way that we write, the way that we kind of craft our art. I think is something that's very important and therefore, just like you would get with a Fender, Telecaster, Jaguar or Stratocaster, it's important that we have nuanced differences, we have choices composers. And it seems that many of you uh, isolated similarities between our BBC library, our Albion One library and this new Orchestral Foundations library with Abbey Road. So I thought I'd just basically do some instant comparisons between the three and take you through what I think are the differences and why I think it's important to have this choice. I'm going to break this up into three sections. Possibly the most important component is sound. There are three very different rooms and two very different styles of orchestra. Secondly, use, including ease of use. And thirdly, journey. These are massive investments for all of us. So it's important to know where we're headed and where we'd like to go. And finally, I'll end up on answering the question of can you mix and match use these different libraries together? So you can jump straight to any of those sections in the contents down below. But first, let's look at or listen to the sound. So what I thought we'd do is listen to strings on the tree mics on all three of the libraries. Now, these two libraries load up with beautiful mixes all preloaded, but then you have all of these fantastic microphones to go through. So what I'm going to go for is the tree, which is just the array of microphones that sit above the conductor's head. Albion, recorded in our birthplace, Air Studios, which is a grand, beautiful hall in North London. The actual floor space is relatively small, which basically means the walls are quite close to the instruments, providing this fantastic early reflection, which duplicates the sound and then sends it up into the ceiling where there's all of this wonderful reverberation. It's the most ambient of the rooms that we work in. Secondly, BBC, also not a purpose-built studio, recorded in a former roller skating rink made of Vale Studios. Now this is a bigger room than the Air Studios, you can fit more people in there, you can fit an orchestra and a choir in there, but it does have a very compact feel with low ceilings. So again, the walls are quite close to the instruments, they have that duplicating early reflection kind of sonic to them, but it doesn't have the ceiling space of Air Studios, so it is the least ambient of the rooms that we work in. And finally, Abbey Road, which is possibly the largest purpose-built studio on the planet. Absolutely enormous. You can easily fit 300 players and singers into there. I liken it to an acoustic guitar body. With a bass acoustic guitar, you need a really big body to kind of resonate the sound. And that is the effect of Abbey Road 1. It just has this hugeness to it, particularly in the low end, without all of the reverberation. So starting with some pizzicatos, let's have a listen to Albion One at Air Studios. You hear there's that beautiful bloom. And then compare that to Made of Ale. This is a much, much shorter decay. And then Abbey Road. So do you see what I mean about the kind of hugeness of Abbey Road 1? It is, if you compare it to Air Studios, it is less reverberant. 
much shorter reverberation, but you feel that it's a kind of a bigger space that you're working within. Let's have a listen to some short notes, spiccatos. Air Studios, Abbey One. So, back to Maida Vale. It's great, it's got so much definition about it, Maida Vale. And then Abbey One. You'll hear it has a kind of looser, fatter sound to it. And let's try some long notes. Classic Hollywood low some octaves between the cellos and basses. All three libraries use dynamic layers, so we've recorded the different timbral differences between loud and soft. Now, for long notes, you switch between or mix between these using your modulation wheel. I'm using a combination of expression and modulation. And then for the short notes, it's just velocity, how loud you're playing it. So again, with Albion One at Air Studios. BBC SO. And Abbey One. But I think it's important to mention that I'm using the expensive pro version of BBC SO. To really compare them, I should switch down to core. And you can see, once I do that, that you don't have that selection of microphones. It's simply a single mix. Now, going back to those dynamic layers that you change both with velocity for the shorts and with your modulation wheel for the longs, I think it's really important to mention that of all three of these libraries, Abbey Road 1 has the most detail in that respect. This is because Abbey Road 1 is us laying out our stall. So what does that mean? Well, in the case of Albion 1 and BBC SO, in order to create complete all-in-one packages, they don't quite have the number of dynamic layers that Abbey Road 1 does. So if you listen to these amazing brass, you get a real uh, kind of panoply of tone colours there. In fact, five dynamic layers, where BBC SO and Albion 1 just have three. So let's count them. One, two, three, four, five. As for the bands themselves, Abbey and Albion are basically a fixed band, so the kind of band you'll hear on most soundtracks. BBC SO is an actual symphony orchestra. They sit next to each other in the same positions, day in, day out. For me, the fixed bands have a more homogenous, blended sound, so the differences between the sections are not as pronounced, whereas the symphony orchestra, the BBC Symphony Orchestra, is something that is more hand-picked and evolved over many years, so that you will hear slightly more pronounced characteristics, certainly between the different string sections. Right, on to use. Now, I think it's really important to go back to the origination of each of these concepts, what we thought they were going to be used for and how people were going to use them and what type of users would use them. Albion One's orchestral elements are organised into ensembles, which are designed, pre-orchestrated, to play two-handed, a compositional tool. Great for us keyboard players, producers, but also composers who want to hear roughly what it's going to sound like before digging deep and getting into the orchestration. Albion One is just basically designed for very epic, modern-sounding scores akin to Hans Zimmer and has cinematic percussion, synths, loops. Everything that you need to get going creating modern, hybrid orchestral scores. There's a similarity between Albion One and the BBC Symphony Orchestra in so much as the BBC Symphony Orchestra is everything. A whole symphony orchestra in a single box. Everything you would need from that symphony orchestra, all the different styles, soloists, percussion, things 
organised not in ensembles, but by sections. So you've got your flute section and then a solo flute. You've got your first violin, second violins, violas, cellos, basses, all separated out. It is as much an orchestration tool as it is a compositional one. It's not designed really for two-handed use. It's all about thinking about each harmonic line as if it is a voice and building up harmonies in a linear fashion, not in a chordal fashion. Now, the other really important thing, we bore people to tears time and time again at Spitfire Audio, is, is part of our absolute core belief is that you shouldn't record samples differently from real music. So we've always approached in the last 13 years now sampling just the same as we would film scores. And when you record film scores, you use mics, lots of them. And we want to give people that mixing power within our plugins. And naturally, with Abbey Road, the best microphone covered in the world, we weren't going to skimp on microphones there. So there are similarities between Abbey One and Albion One in the sense that orchestral foundations is like Albion One, everything you need to kind of get going with the amazing cinematic sound that you can create in Abbey Road. But it also has an enormous array of microphones, not only because it was recorded in Abbey Road, because this is just the foundations, the beginning of a massive train set that we're going to be building with you over the next few years. I'm going to come back to that. Let's just talk about users. For me, Albion One suits me as a user. I'm a pop keyboard player, drum and bass producer, and come very much out of the programming and playing point of view. Albion One plays into that aesthetic that I can jam in a synth line that it just happens to be an orchestra. It's a great fear-free introduction into orchestral music without having to think like an orchestrator. BBC Symphony Orchestra, however, is all of the different threads required to build up your canvas, all of the different colours and brushes for your painting, if you will. And this doesn't mean that you need to be massively theoretically knowledgeable or have studied orchestration. You just need to think more along orchestral lines. This is less of a synth made out of an orchestra and more all of the orchestral ingredients you need to build up true orchestral symphonic arrangements. Abbey Road 1 Orchestral Foundations is basically a starting point for everyone. So if you're like me, drum and bass producer who likes to play two-handed, then it's a great entry point into the world of Abbey Road 1. And it gives you a wonderfully varied foundation of brass, woodwinds, strings and percussion. It also has this massive microphone set because of where we're taking it. We're going to be expanding these uh, packs that are based on two-handed, pre-orchestrated ideas, but also in the next months and years to come, a whole new modular system. And this is when we need to start talking about journeys. Journeys, again, this ties in with choice and the various different journeys we should all embark on. The single most important thing to develop as a composer, as a professional, is your own voice. And by offering choice, there's a whole different bunch of trajectories that you can go on. I think what's very common with the next step from Albion 1 is people wanting to uh, find greater definition in what they do. Albion 1's great for... these kind of block chords but what will naturally start happening the more you use it is you'll get these little intricate inner parts that you really want to eke out So a lot of people naturally move on from Albion to our symphonic range, also recorded in the Hall at Air studios. The journey for BBC Symphony users is a much more obvious one, starting with BBC Discover, which is free if you're unable to pay for it. And you can then switch up to Core, which will be your first leap into professional grade sampling, everything you need to make broadcast quality master recordings. And then finally into Pro, which is, as it suggests, a real 
pro-end encyclopedia of the symphony orchestra with no less encyclopedic attention to mic signals. Finally settling on Abbey Road 1. And what I find really exciting about this is the way that we've started. We've started as a compositional aid regardless of which direction you're then going to take it in. We're going to be creating packs along the lines of orchestral foundations, which are going to be easy to use, general use for everyone, whether you're a drum and basser or an experienced orchestrator. Uh, they will be instant gratification, easy to use, spring out of the box. But also... Because we've got all of these mic positions, they will integrate into this much more detailed modular system coming soon. So regardless of your skills, whether you go for all of these different modules that we're going to be building of the separate strings in their separate sections and different soloists, you'll still probably use orchestral foundations as your writing kit, the thing that you can take wherever you go to mock up, sketch up stuff before you start expanding into the various different nuanced areas of detail that we're going to be exploring with you over the next few years. And what's different about the approach to Abbey Road 1, this new chapter, a new opportunity, is not only are we going to be collaborating with them on this, we're going to be collaborating with you. But what about the Albions and BBC? Are we turning our back on them? Of course not. Well, with Albion, which are organised kind of by genre, we added one to the range only just this year, Albion Neo, and indeed to the symphonic range. So if you're moving on into that, we expanded that with symphonic motions. And as we've been saying for quite a while now, it's been difficult to get into the studio, we're working on improving these libraries all of the time. Air, as I mentioned earlier, is our birthplace and we're not going to abandon it. And as for BBC SO, well there's something that's quite complete about the symphonic orchestra. It's a symphony orchestra and we've recorded pretty much everything that we want to. But there are other opportunities coming with BBC. For example, we're hoping to get in there to record a piano before the studio shuts. We're having difficulties at the moment because of COVID. But where BBC is concerned, we're also really committed to making more and more content to take advantage of the collaborative nature of BBC SO and whatever tier that you own, you can look under the hood and see what we've done with our various different arrangements and tutorials. As I mentioned before, it's all about choice and choice is a good thing for us composers. But the question that always is asked whenever we go into a different room, whether that be Air One or uh, British Grove or Abbey Road, is can you use these libraries together? And the good news is, of course you can. Most film scores you listen to are recorded in a multitude of locations. Say a bamboo flute in a, in a writing room like this, with a string section recorded at air and percussion recorded at Abbey Road 1. Even the hall itself has booths around the side so you can shove a harp in so they can be heard and close mic'd. Our ears are incredibly sensitive to, to nuance, but not necessarily detail. I did a film recently that talked about the fact that our brains are not able to compute all of the different frequencies that you would find, say, listening to some waves crashing on a beach. They're all in there. But we're very, very susceptible to the character of sound. If I speak like this, as opposed to if I speak like this, the tone is the same. The words are the same, but the character is different and one will sponsor a different emotional response from you. So fortunately, we have evolved over the many millennia to develop an understanding of nuance, proximity, scale, but not necessarily whether something's been recorded in the same room or not. Once we mix them all together, our ears have no need to perform that separation.
and what all engineers do when they're mixing orchestral material together. The aforementioned bamboo flute in a composer's writing room, the strings in air studios, the brass in abbey, is to apply a bit of splosh. This adds to the epic widescreen cinematic sound that we're used to. I'm going to use my current favourite, which is the Fab Filter, and this is the one that sounds like the medium warm hall that uh, most engineers use on the TC6000. It's an incredibly expensive reverb unit. Right, and that should glue it all together. And you tell me whether this tiny excerpt sounds like it's been recorded in loads of different rooms. As I mentioned before, these are like instruments. When we use instruments to compose, they influence the outcome of that composition. If you write something on an acoustic guitar compared to, say, an electric guitar, it's likely that you're going to play into the characteristic of that instrument. And that's no different with different orchestras in different rooms. The orchestra itself will be responding to the space and your compositions will bloom and naturally lean into the aspects of those orchestral recordings and those rooms in a manner that will affect the outcome of your composition, which is again why choice is important. Abbey Road One Orchestral Foundations is the beginning of a really interesting journey, one where we encourage you to find your own voice, whether that is through detailed orchestration and really getting into the physics of voicing your orchestras or indeed by simply picking up some interesting packs that combine with what you already have to create something that is wholly yours. I hope this has answered some of the questions. If I haven't, Place some more in the questions down below and I will keep an eye on them and try and get back to you personally. I'm just about to start a new film project and something I'm really looking forward to is having the pick of three of the greatest rooms for recording orchestras in the UK. Is it going to be an Abbey score? Is it going to be an Air score? Or is it going to be the BBC Symphony Orchestra recorded in a roller skating rink? Thanks, as always, for watching. Do subscribe if you haven't done. Plenty more information about Abbey Road coming. It is, as I say, the beginning of a massive journey. So ding that bell if you want to be notified the next time we put a video up. And one of those, always much appreciated. See you next time.